We are Matt and Amy. We completed our dream of sailing full circle around the world on our 37-foot sailboat Florence over the last seven years. But now we are preparing for a new challenge. We want to sail Florence to the top of the world and into the Arctic Circle. But to do that, she needs a full refit. Over those seven years of sailing Florence around the world, we've had to make many repairs. But some things are just too big to be tackled whilst on the move or in isolated remote locations. The to-do list has been gradually growing ahead of our return to our home port in England. So now is the time to give her a full inspection and see what repairs are needed after over 50,000 miles of ocean sailing. The task list is daunting and we have just one winter to complete it. Have we bitten off more than we can chew? It's just one week since we arrived here into Port Solent Marina to complete our seven-year circumnavigation of the world. But we are not stopping here. We have big plans for the future, and that meant that after just one day of rest, we cracked straight on with preparing for the next adventure. But in order to be ready for that adventure, we have a lot of work to do. And that means taking Florence into a boatyard and hauling her out of the water. We can certainly attest to the saying that cruising is fixing boats in exotic locations. Our seven year trip around the world gave us plenty of breakages that needed urgent repair. It seemed the more exotic the location, the bigger the repair. Now we have made it back to our home country, the list is longer than ever. It has been two years and two major ocean crossings since we last lifted Florence out of the water way back in the Seychelles. In order to haul Florence out of the water, we are sailing back out of Portsmouth Harbour along the coast to a boatyard at the top of a muddy creek. We need to time our approach to the boatyard with the tide, as we need a high tide to reach it over the mud banks without getting Florence stuck in the mud. We're using the stay sail instead of the Genoa for this trip despite the relatively light winds, because we took the opportunity of the calm weather and a clean dock in Port Solent Marina to take the Genoa down and fold it up. We needed to do this before we reached the boatyard, and it was much easier to do alongside a dock than it would be at anchor. Once we reach the boatyard, we need to go straight into the boat lift and get Florence out of the water before the tide drops and leaves her stuck in the mud. As we approach the boatyard, it might look from above that there's plenty of depth here. But in fact, we have to carefully follow a narrow channel. Thankfully, it's well marked by both withies and the moor boats on its centre line. Once the tide goes out, there will just be a narrow trickle of water left between the mud banks. It is certainly a beautiful day for our last sail on Florence before the refit. We are going to be in the yard for six months, and we hope that Florence will emerge at the end of that period all fixed up and ready to sail north in April 2024. It's been over two years since we last hauled Florence out of the water to re-antifoul her in the Seychelles. And the water here in England is a bit chilly compared to what we used to so we haven't jumped into the water to give her a scrub for a couple of months. Considering all of that, her bottom is not too dirty. Pressure washing gets rid of most of the growth, but there will still be a lot of work for us to do below the waterline before we can repaint and relaunch.
The first major part to be removed here in the yard will mean that Florence is no longer a sailing boat and we are not going to be sailing anywhere until it's back in place. Although her mast was down when we bought Florence and we changed the rigging in 2016, it's been in place ever since, so she's going to feel very naked without it. Ready inside? We have stripped all of the sails off, removed the boom and disconnected all of the wires that run up the mast, ready for the yard to come in with the crane. Florence's mast is keel-stepped, so we have to carefully guide it out through the hole in the deck as the crane lifts it. In order to keep the cost down, we plan to do all of the work on Florence ourselves. But driving a crane to pull the mast out is not on our skills list, so we have the yard staff doing this for us. Having Florence's mast down means that we can easily do some maintenance on it without having to swing around in a climbing harness. But that's not the main reason that we're taking it down. In order to do some of the bigger jobs on our list, we need Florence in a shed, and the mast simply won't fit. This is the most empty Florence has been in the entire time that she's been with us. As you can see, one of the major things that's come out is the mast used to be here. And then we've actually taken out the table uh, to give us more space to work. We've taken all of the cushions out and emptied as many of the cupboards as we can. So this is really the start point for our winter refit of Florence. We have stripped her out as much as we can and today we've got Ron, who you might recognise from way back when we were in the Caribbean and we had that crack in the bulkhead. And he's an expert and came and helped, very good friend and an expert, and he came and helped us fix that. He's also done quite a lot of yacht surveying in his time and he is going to be giving Florence a painstakingly fine tooth survey to find out absolutely everything about her and anything that could possibly be wrong with her so that we can rectify all of that over the next six months in the yard before we head north up to the Arctic because we want her to be in as perfect condition as we can get her for that. Which is the first area of concern. We'll look at that on the other side. It looks really bad, but bear in mind what we've got here is a, a fitting that has been bonded into the boat and we've got constant vibration here. So it's not surprising to find a bit of cracking along here. But again, what I expect we have to do is grind that all back, investigate how far this has gone up until such time as we can find some clean, dry glass. And then we'll replace that and we'll epoxy that in again and that will be good to go. And then the horn here, which is obviously through bolted up here, I think this is warranting investigation. You've got, got some sort of leakage going here and it coming through the fiberglass here so that's going to warrant us having a look at it just grinding this back having a look what's in here and looking at the plans as well as what we expect to see in there okay and that's, that's just holding on the bottom of the yeah. rudder here yeah and it's just the obvious rust you can see coming through yeah and there are bolts going up into that which are bolting this on you can see here it's a separate section um, yes we've already looked at the um, bearings and bearings, considering how far she's gone, are she'll go round again with yeah. the same bearings. That's not a problem. The hull is fine. There's no problem at all. It's got no osmosis anywhere on the hull. Then we come on to what we can see here, which is osmosis, and we can see that on the rudder um, we've only got a couple of little areas here. We and I'd recommend what again. we do is we grind out, and leave it for as long as we can, or quite a long time. Let it all dry out, um, um, and then once we've done that. We totally strip the rudder and where we're digging holes we'll obviously fill the holes and then we'll put um, an epoxy barrier over the whole thing prior to putting the anti-filling back on again. Since Ron is doing this as a friend rather than a paid surveyor, 
we don't have a time limit for the survey. As he's also taken the time to advise us on how to fix the problems that we find, the process of surveying Florence took a couple of days. So one of the things Ron's instructed us to do is to take out some of the bolts in the stem fitting that holds the full stay onto the boat so that we can check them. So that's one of the bolts taken out. And then we check in the hole to make sure it's all dry in the hole. I mean, this, the bolt looks absolutely fine. Um, but what we're also going to do is we're not going to put the same bolt back in because you never really know with stainless steel whether it could be weakened. So we're going to get a brand new bolt and put that back in. But Ron's now going to have a little look on deck and in the holes and a couple of other bolts I've taken out, make sure that everything is OK for us. So we took the bolts out on the bow and that was absolutely fine. There was no moisture inside and no water ingress, but we were getting some rusting on this plate here on the stern. And this is what our backstay attaches to. So we've never had this off because we've never had uh, the rig down. And we took out one of the bolts, uh, the, the most rusty one, and there was some water inside there. So Ron's advised that we actually take the whole of this off. You can see that there's at some point water being coming in here and Ron's going to be able to have a look from the inside um, at, the, at the actual structure of the, the fiberglass and the hull. And we're obviously going to replace every single one of these bolts and clean this up. And reseal it properly. And reseal it properly, yeah. So down here, we could see that we've clearly had a little bit of water damage around here. And she's been like that ever since we owned her. But this is the chain plate that holds the main shroud to hold the mast up. So this is really important. And given that there is some damage here, and we don't have the mast up anymore for the first time in our circumnavigation. Uh, we're actually going to take the whole of this off so we can really check what's behind there. So I'm going to undo all of these bolts and hopefully this will then, I need to cut the seal to the deck and then this should come off and we can check to make absolutely sure that this really essential structural piece of the boat is sound. And if not, do something about it. Quite a thick bulkhead. Quite a long bolt and it only just pokes out the other side. They all come out clean. And I've gone and cut the Sikaflex that's joining this to the deck. Oh, that's pretty beefy. So that is our chain plate. Oh, you can see where the water's damaged the veneer at the bottom here it's peeling off but up here solid as a rock on the back of here this still looks really good So we've now been over Florence with a fine tooth comb and we have a comprehensive list of what work needs to be done. But that list is so big that to get our heads around it, we've had to separate it into three categories. The first being the essential repairs that we need to do. The second being any repairs and improvements that we need for sailing to the Arctic. And then the third is the list of things that would be really nice to have, but we're probably not going to get time to do. So the essential repairs and maintenance list it is quite a long list, I warn you. We've got to remove and reseal the stanchions, the push pit and the pulpit. Remove, repair or replace the tow rail. Now that is going to be a massive job. We're really not looking forward to that one, but I don't think we can avoid it. We've got to remove, repair the damaged deck grip where all the treadmaster on the deck is starting to go brittle from all the time in the UV and lift off the deck. So we've got to pull all that off and replace it with something. Uh, remove and repair the corroded and worn steering pedestal. We've had that apart last in Indonesia. It's a little bit of play there. It's still safe but it's something we definitely want to address this winter season before we go any further. We need to fix the corroded port light in the cockpit, remove the rotten base plate under the anchor windlass, service it and reinstall it. Service the wind vane airy steering, which has done over 50,000 miles for us now, so that needs a little bit of looking at. Repair and reseal the chain plates, that's what holds the mast up, so they're pretty important. Service all of the winches, repair some gel coat cracks in the hull and also on the bow where we hit so much stuff going through Indonesia. Got a lot of chips and crazing right on the, on the stem where she cuts through the water. We've got to grind out the osmosis on the rudder, grind back the P-bracket and the skeg boot to investigate why we've got some little cracks there. Hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. 
And then once we dry that out, we need to refiberglass the PU bracket and the skeg and put it all back together. And we have to fill and fare the grinding that we'll do on the rudder. I'm going to scrape and sand the entire hull and then prepare it, prime it and re-antifoul it. We've got to clean, polish and service the propeller, replace the anodes, strip and service the seacocks, replace all the pipe clips on the through hulls because you need to do that every so often because they do tend to fail over time. And if that happens, then you have a big hole in the bottom of the boat, which is not good. Uh, replace the leaking log paddle wheel housing. Redo the temporary repair to the baby stay, which is where the baby stay comes down and the bulkhead was detached from the hull. And we found that in the Caribbean and we actually did a temporary repair to that in the Caribbean. But now we're going to rip that off and do a really strong, proper repair that will get us for the rest of Florence's life, hopefully. We've got to regalvanize or replace the anchor, polish the hull to protect the gel coat, dig out and replace a soft core in the deck around the Samson post. So that's up on the foredeck. We found that when the Samson post had been put in, it clearly hadn't been sealed around the bolt holes and some water has got into the core. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to have gone too far, so we just need to let that dry out a bit. We've dug it out, let that dry out a bit, and then we can fill it and repair that. We need to replace the old corroded mast wiring, except the VHF aerial, which is new because we replaced it in South Africa. And then we've got some wear and tear on the rig we need to fix. We need to redo the internal mast seal, replace the broken gearbox dipstick on the engine, and that's snapped off in the engine. So that's going to be a little bit tricky to get out. We need to service the engine. Uh, we need to replace the leaking freshwater drinking pump, drinking water pump. So that's been leaking for the last few months and we've known about it, but uh, we haven't had time to get a new one yet. We need to replace the toilet pipes, reseal the bathroom floor, replace the rusted and dangerous cooker. Uh, we can't use the grill at the moment because the gas pipe there has rusted through. And when we investigated, the whole cooker is full of rust. So we need to replace the whole thing. Replace the gas regulator with a new one. That's just a precautionary thing. Replace the gas leak alarm. That's because you're supposed to do it every so often. Uh, clean and treat the water tanks. Reseal the galley sink. Epoxy, and then we need to do some epoxy repairs to the dinghy and paint the dinghy. And that is our essential repairs and maintenance list. That's not everything. So the next list is all of the improvements that we want to make for sailing north up to the Arctic. And the first of those is our head sails. So our Genoa, we replaced in Thailand and has now had three major ocean crossings and it's just time for a change. Uh, but the stay sail, we want to make some real improvements to. So we want to add a furler to that. And the main reason for that is to limit the amount of time that we have to spend on the foredeck changing sails. And that's gonna make life on board much safer because it reduces the risk of us falling over the side, which is particularly important in the freezing cold waters uh, of the Arctic Circle. So in order to make those changes, we obviously need to fit a furler, we'll need a new stay sail, and uh, we'll also need a non-stretch halyard uh, for the stay sail and a few new fittings uh, for the deck. And then next is possibly the biggest improvement to our life on board Florence, and that's upgrading our power system. So we need to improve our solar panels and um, upgrade those from 250 watts uh, up to 400 watts, replace our current batteries and upgrade those to lithium, and then also fit a serpentine belt to the engine, which is going to hugely increase the amount of power that we can gain charging the batteries from the engine. And then we're on to keeping warm. So we need to add insulation throughout every area of the boat that we, we can do so. We also need to replace our old non-working diesel heater and fit a new working one. A major issue that we're gonna face sailing north is condensation. So we're gonna try and reduce that by adding some hatch covers to all of the windows and hatches and also adding some ventilation to underneath our mattress. And then we also need to re-waterproof our bimney and spray hood uh, because they're starting to leak and make some alterations to both the bimney and the cockpit tent for when we're sailing. And that brings us on to the list of things we would like to do. Apologies about the noise in the background. That's the difficulties of filming in a working yard. So we would like to replace the crazed UV windows down the side of Florence, remove the antenna mast at the back, which is a bit ugly, and move those antennas onto the bimney. Replace the dorade vents, some cosmetic gel coat repairs in the deck and the cockpit. Replace the sealant on the hull to deck joint, just where it's just uh, got old and it's called flaking off. Add some new LED deck lights instead of the existing old school ones and a new LED steaming light. Add a masthead crane to the spinnaker halyard because sometimes the spinnaker halyard just catches on the foresail a little bit and it causes damage to the block at the top and we have to replace that every now and then. So a masthead crane would prevent that. Replace the instruments, they're getting pretty old and some of the digital bits have gone on the displays. 
Uh, replace the damaged headlining, recover side panels in the four peak so that'll help with the condensation. Fix some cosmetic damage to the window surrounds where they've cracked when we've had to take the windows out and put them back in again on our journey around the world. Fix the wood panel damage by the fridge. Interior varnish. Florence could really do with a re-varnish on the inside, but that's quite a big job. Uh, replace the copper gas pipe, seal and replace the kitchen countertops. Replace the fridge lid so it actually seals, although that's not so much of a problem if we're going to the cold north. Sand and repair and varnish the floorboards. They've had quite a lot of wear and tear over the years. Sand and paint the lockers and bilges. Replace the saloon table with something that doesn't take up quite so much space, but that'll be a big project. Really don't think we'll get time for that. And hopefully, replace the cockpit table. <laughs> So that is the full list and that is definitely going to keep us busy for the whole winter. Although I'm sure we'll also find some stuff that isn't on the list yet as we go through. That's boat work. That looks like really hard work, Amy. <laughs> it is, and normally when we're in the boatyard, uh, scraping off the hull or sanding back and, and putting antifoul on again is the hardest part or the one of the most major jobs. Uh, but this refit is so big that this is just a tiny fraction. I'm just trying to kind of get it done before we move into the shed. The trouble is at the moment, because some of the antifoul has come off, but the in places it's still fairly thick it's really difficult to get the smooth surface without clogging up the sandpaper so I'm physically scraping it back all across the hull uh, just to try and get a more even surface and then I'll sand it uh, very lightly to, um, to just key it in before we put the primer and then the antifoul on. At least three solid days uh, to scrape back. Um, I'd hope that I'd get sanded off in that time as well but yeah we'll see. It's a big job. When you've got somebody helping you out, who knows what they're doing, it's still quite worrying when you come and look at the bottom of your boat and all the anti-fouling's gone, all the gel coat's gone, and it's back down to the glass. But that's because we've got a couple of cracks in the front of the skeg here, and uh, it just really needs to be done. And at least Ron uh, is more confident about taking this a lot further back than I would be, so find out what the cause is, and then fix it. So one of the areas we need to check is the temporary repair that Ron came out to the Caribbean and did on a crack we had under this bulkhead before we crossed the Atlantic Ocean. We've been through quite a rough swell since then, so we're just gonna lift this up, but it was a temporary repair, and we now need to take that off and do a proper repair here in the boatyard. So that repair has actually held absolutely fine, even though we did all that time jumping off waves on the way up from Bahamas to Bermuda, and also when we had five days in a gale crossing the North Atlantic. So it's actually really good, but Ron's gonna take it off and do a really proper repair there that's gonna see us through sailing up to the Arctic. And beyond. And beyond. So what all that grinding has been doing is removing our temporary repair, which we put in back in the Caribbean. And that was really tough. It was stuck really, really well, and it did a great job, but we want to do a proper two-sided repair because this we only put on from one side onto the bulkhead. And that's actually the old repair there come off eventually. And when we strip this back, what we've also found, and we knew was there's a little bit of rot in this bulkhead in the corner of the bathroom. Now that's not structural, that's just a ornamental uh, bulkhead. So we're actually gonna remove this piece of wood as well and replace that with something which is uh, marine ply and we're gonna epoxy coat it and sheath it so that it can't get wet and go rotten again. 
so yeah, so a lot of work to grind out and now we still need to get this bit of wood out and then we can start rebuilding it. But so far the hull's still really strong and this, as I say, this is not structural. That is just, just the step going into the bathroom. That's the only thing. This bit is solid as a rock. This bit is solid. It's just this little bit here. Okay, so this is where the bulkhead was cracked before and we had the repair that we did in the Caribbean. That's been taken out. Uh, but as we've done that, we've actually made a much bigger hole. So that's the gap. That's where we had that temporary repair all under there. But if we come back here, we now can see completely under the bathroom here and we completely removed this piece of wood here. And that's because we found this piece of wood that was behind here had actually gone slightly rotten. So we pulled that out, again, it's not structural. And then we've made a new piece of marine ply that is going to slot in here. And we can take the original cap rail, which we'll clean up. And that should go back in there like that. And then although this is marine ply, it doesn't look like it should because there's a piece of veneer on here. So we've got a nice veneer faced piece of marine ply and we've cut that to fit slot up under there. And so we should have all, all properly repaired. And once we varnish that, it's not gonna look exactly the same because obviously uh, Florence is over 35 years old and this piece is new, but it at least will be the right, it's the right type of wood, it's the correct veneer. So eventually it will look the same. So, but now what we've got to do is wedge all that in the right place and put a layer of uh, fiberglass along here, epoxy it all together and we'll be good. So down below we're a complete mess because we've got loads of panels off so that we can access all the bolts to get the tow rail, but we have got one good piece of progress. The first thing to get fixed and go back together is down here underneath the, the bathroom floor here and this bulkhead. And that has now all been fiberglass back together. These supports are just holding it whilst the epoxy goes off, but actually that should have gone off by now. So we'll just leave them there for a little bit longer. But that's done. The first thing we've ticked off on the list. Unfortunately, next time things don't go so smoothly. I really wish that we had not started these projects. For extra updates in between these bi-weekly videos, and to find out what we were up to in real time, head over to Patreon and join the crew. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next episode here on YouTube. Continuing our voyage on Florence would not be possible without the support of our patrons. Thank you to all of you, and a special thanks to our star patrons.